So the Cherokee Generating Station is one of your older coal plants. This is this is one of our older coal plants. Some of these units came in in the late 50s. Uh, the more recent ones came in in the early 70s. Okay, and now you have four units here. One, two, three, four. That's correct. These are all coal-fired units that you see here. Um, going basically to the north. Behind it you see the current levels of emission controls that we have on it. Because these are coal-fired plants, we try to control particulates, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide. And up here, of course, is the coal pile. This is the coal pile, and what you see in other places are related cooling ponds. Another crucial part right down here is the, the, the substation yard. Transmission have, lines. For transmission lines, there's about 17 transmission lines that come in and out of this facility. Okay. What's your plan for this plant? This, the, there, let me start over here. There is a, a law that was passed earlier this year called the Clean Air, Clean Jobs Act, which essentially wants us to look at ways to convert much of our coal-fired generation in Colorado to natural gas or to do retirements or also to potentially retrofit plants with better emission controls. So you can either shut them down, convert them to natural gas, or make them cleaner burning coal With more emission units. controls, correct. Okay. So what this is really the centerpiece of the whole Clean Air, Clean Jobs Act, because this is our Cherokee plant. This is, this, where, this is where most of the activity will happen. We know as we sit here today that under most of the scenarios we're looking at, these three units will come out. These are coal-fired units. So you've come up with different plans. Mm -hmm to give the state to say here's what we can do. Right. We're really right now in the process where our Utilities Commission is trying to determine the best way to go about enacting Clean Air, Clean Jobs Act. And one of the things that we do know is that in most of the scenarios that are being considered and are likely to happen, we will remove this portion of the plant right here, which includes three coal-fired units. We may also, under certain scenarios, remove this fourth unit, which is the largest on the complex. This unit, though, also may be um, kept as a coal-fired unit and put on more emission controls. Now you also need to keep operating during this transition. Yeah, it's this. It's hard to believe, but this is a really tight footprint for a mm -hmm. power plant. So, um, because this is at the heart of our generation and transmission system in Denver, we have to keep generating electricity to some level to support our grid while we are tearing down all this equipment and while we are building other units that will be gas-fired in other parts of the property. Okay. Um, okay, so um, once the PUC decides on this plant and others, uh, mm -hmm. give, me the, give me the larger picture. How many of your plants might you make changes in? We are going to use a combination of retiring and units. We're retiring a unit in Boulder, Colorado. This is a retirement and a repowering. We'll be doing both here. We'll be retiring three or four units and repowering the natural gas. There are units out in northeastern Colorado and, uh, and out in uh, northwestern, quite frankly that are coal units that will remain as coal, but we will put on more stringent and state-of-the-art emission control equipment on those plants. And you see this happening in other states around the country? In, in our particular case, um, a lot of the reason we're doing this is that these units have reached their life expectancy, but given, given what is clearly becoming an abundant supply of natural gas in the United States, and the fact that it's a domestic fuel, and the fact that it burns more cleanly than coal. You have less emissions from natural gas generation than you do coal. We think that, you know, it, it's clear that a lot of parts of the country are going to be looking to go to, nat to natural gas fire generation. Uh, do you believe it's the right way to go? It depends on your situation. Um, I mean, the environmentalists, are they going to say, let's go straight to renewables? Well, the problem, the problem still with renewables as we sit here today is that you have intermittency and they don't produce 24 hours a day, but our demand for electricity is 24 hours a day. So it really kind of depends on your situation. And, and just make this really quick. As a utility company, you consider other things besides emission. You have to consider reliability. Uh, are you going to have that electricity available? You have to consider cost to your consumers. In some cases, it makes really good sense to go to a plan like this. This will only cost our consumers about one and a half percent on their utility bill a month. It's a good, it's a pretty good Your deal. Your preferred for plan. Our, uh, the plan we're recommending now, mm -hmm. correct. All the plans will be anywhere between about one and a half to maybe um, two and a half, close to three percent. Uh, on your customer bill. So under any scenario, customer bills are going up? They will go up, but the benefit you get is, is cleaner air and compliance with federal standards for our, for our you know, issues of regional haze and ozone in Denver. So it is, it is a cost of doing business. And, and you know, here in Colorado, our customers are pretty, are pretty keen to supporting renewables. We have more renewable energy on our system than any other, um, any other utility in the country. And so we have, a, we have a populace that, that supports this kind of plan. We, we have taken polls on it, quite frankly, and there is overwhelming support to do something about the makeup of our, our coal-fired generation at this time. And right now, converting to gas is, the, is a good way to go. Converting to gas is a great way to go. 
to a certain extent. You you See, never. What's uh, happening you, is we have an abundance of natural gas. The mm -hmm. renewables aren't quite up to commercial right. scale yet, and now you're facing these regulations. That's correct. And for us, for us, it makes sense to move a portion of our generation portfolio over to natural gas. Coal will still be significant because. Utility company never wants to put all its eggs in one basket, quite frankly, so you want to have a generation mix that includes coal, natural gas, renewables, and conservation energy efficiency. So we try to balance all of those things, but in our particular case here in Colorado, we really believe that, um, that moving a significant amount of our generation to natural gas is a good way to go for a number of reasons, reliability, cost. Uh, environmental benefits. Okay. Okay. So, Mark, right now you have four units. Right now, it's coal, 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 and coal. Under your recommended plan, this would be natural gas, natural gas, natural gas, and pr possibly still coal here. That's correct. This would include emission controls. We are really conscious of the price to consumers, even though it, it, it's it's percentage points. The recommended plan we have right now is a combination of natural gas and leaving one unit as coal. We, however, have no real problem if if this is what the commission decides to turn all of these to natural gas. It will be slightly more of a cost to consumers, uh, a little under 1% a month on their customer bills, but it may be that our utilities commission think that, thinks that is the best way to go from, a, from an emission standpoint and all the benefits that will we get from it. From it. And why Sorry. are we only talking gas here? Why isn't there something else you can convert to? I, I do hear about coal plants converting to biomass. Um, you know, the problem with biomass, quite frankly, is what type of fuel are you going to use? It's true here in Colorado, we have a lot of forestation that we could probably bring down, but the transportation costs are, it, it's very tough to get that fuel there. It's not always a completely um, uh, consistent source of fuel. And you can get stuff in biomass that, uh, that can affect the reliability of your operations. A lot so of times in other biomass plants, we see, for example, people will be bringing in things like engine blocks and, and whatever to try to burn in our plants. And right. so you you want to have, we're, we're a very conservative industry and we want to know that everything's it's going that to work. Factor. It's, it's that reliability factor. We want to make sure that everything's working and that it's working over a long period of time. So from your perspective, converting a coal plant means natural gas? That in this particular case, we, in this particular unit, we are converting to natural gas. This is, this is the way for us to go with this plant on the north side of Denver. We will continue to have coal plants on our system. But I mean, as, as far as options for, a, for an old coal plant. Yes, there, th this, this is going to need, yeah, at this, I get what you're saying. At this location, we need to use a fossil fuel. And the way for us to go, giving all the factors that everyone is considering from the environmental, from political, from operation, from reliability, from cost for us, it's a good plan to go to natural gas, at least on these first three units and quite possibly on the fourth. In general, when you talk about the older, more polluting coal plants across the country and you talk about converting them, generally this means to natural gas. Other utilities that are looking to convert their coal plants, as we are here, their only option if they intend to use fossil fuel really is natural gas. Some may look at oil back east, but generally speaking, natural gas is the most abundant And converting fuel that we have. to other things like biomass that uh, brings up other issues. Yeah, biomass biomass brings up other issues, the, the reliability. You're about the, tearing it down and rebuilding it. In, in and and you, you don't have as, I mean, you know that you can get natural gas to your plant, all that you need, wherever you are in the United United States. You can get coal there. It's the generation fuel we're talking about here. With biomass, that's a little that gets a little bit iffier from time to time as you get the generation fuel there to produce the electricity. You don't really want to put a lot of your eggs in that basket.